Tomer Shishan wrote and directed White Eye. I'm Riley Chow of Gold Derby, where we cover the Oscars all year round, and your film is now shortlisted for uh, Best Live Action Short. So at what point did you realize that you had something Oscar worthy, and how did you set out on the path to kind of get nominated? Um, actually, in, in the beginning, um, I was I was a finalized film, and I started like to send it over to some film festival because it's a short film. The only place that you can screen it and present it is uh, mostly in uh, film festivals. So um, I got for one year. I just got negative uh, answers, and the film didn't go nowhere. So I thought it's a big failure, and I was a bit. Um, uh, upset about it but then um, we thought maybe we should like change something and we just cut the first four minutes of the film and uh, then um, I don't know uh, the film got accepted to South by Southwest which was the world premiere for the film and uh, it won the first place like the, the best uh, narrative short film and um, I, I never thought about Oscar. I just was in shock and was very, very excited about winning South by Southwest. And and then I remember that they wrote us that um, it's Oscar qualifying award. So the film can, can compete for the Oscars. And I thought, wow, it's too far for me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. And then uh, the film started like to go to lots of film festivals because of this win and because uh, people just started to watch this film maybe in another from another angle and um, um, I don't know it's also happened on the same time that Black Lives Matter started and I think it may be um, connected to it so yeah it, it's just I don't know from month to month I just see how it affects people and how it um, how it goes to all the biggest film festivals and, and win lots of prizes. So it's, it's a procedure that I, I, I learned during the time um, that this film is, is making something and it's special. So I'm, I'm super excited about it. And yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing year so far. And what was in those first four minutes? Um, wow, it's, it's actually... Um, how this person walking uh, out of a yoga classroom and, and find like he's so peaceful and he's just walking in the street back home and then he finds his stolen bicycle. Um, but it was four long minutes that nothing really happened <laughs> and um, it can kill the, 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 the tension that uh, was was building very precisely uh, after, in the 20 minutes after. So it's like, it could feel like two films or like the opening don't really show where this film gonna go. And um, it just needed to be out of it. And then in that time when you were getting rejected, do you think about kind of uh, chopping up the film? Because right now it's presented as a 20 minute single take. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's like, it, it came, it came, um, it came to my mind a few times that maybe the, the opening is, is not really good, but it's, it's really hard to cut something that you were planned and you're, you were already like filmed and you like really like it, but you need to understand that at some point you need to like, um, let it go and just to understand that maybe it's going to be hard decisions, but you maybe need to, to, to do something that you didn't expect it. And, um, and just to think about the film and think about the audience and think about what's best for it um, to bring the message that you want to bring, because at the end you like tell a story and you want to bring a message. And um, if something harm, harm to it, um, you just need to um, cut it and, and let it go. Um, so it was a procedure of me understanding uh, what's good or, and bad for the film. So the film, I think, actually is a real uh, single take for 20 minutes. Uh, I'm wondering, did you think about doing kind of multiple takes and splicing them together like we saw in uh, 1917 last year, for example? 
yeah, um, I, I can tell you that it crossed my mind, but I thought that this film specifically is going after um, a character that is uh, located in some state of mind that I felt that if I'm if I'll start like to to build um, uh, hidden cuts and like to to separate the film to a few parts, it maybe can really harm the energy of the main character. And I really wanted to be like one fluent energy, one fluent state of mind that controlling the actions of the main characters. And I feel like uh, I could only achieve it with one single take. Uh, do you have any favorites from the genre? Uh, I think my favorite would be the German film, Victoria, from 2015. Yeah, I mean, this is an amazing um, example for a film that I, I really watched and thought to myself, this is like a real one shot. You see that there is no cuts and you feel how it is made by one uh, one by by one like breathe you know and uh, I feel I, I think that Victoria is really a good example for it I um, watched few parts of the before I made the film and I wanted to make it like in one shot real one shot I, I watched uh, Gaspar Noir irreversible film which is um, separate to few one shots but there is one single part of the film that it's um, it's it's really influenced me. Um, it's also like a, about one person and the camera going after him. And um, I felt that it's also was a good um, um, reference to the film. Also Victoria and also I'm a big fan of Belatar, uh, the amazing Hungarian um, a director that I don't know influenced me since I, I started to like films. Um, so yeah, it's like mixture of of you. I understand that you didn't have the actors meet until you were actually shooting because you wanted to keep you know a level of tension, uh, which is inter interesting for this project because I would think that they would need to have all the kind of choreography down. Uh, so how did you work that out? I really feel that um, there are things that you can tr tr control your actors to do and there are things that you cannot. There are things that us as humans, because actors are humans, they, they, there are limits to what they can and cannot. And I think there is something super powerful for first time meeting someone. And um, the, 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 the first time that you, feel, you meet someone, you also don't have like, lots of sentiment, sympathy or like sentiments, uh, that's how you say it, sentiments sure. uh, for, for, for the person. So um, I really wanted to keep it as two strangers that meet for the first time. And they actually, even though we all came to the set and organized, we kept them separate. Like they met the first time on the, on the take, on the shot, like that's the first time that they met. And then when we needed to do another shot, we, we kept like separate between them. So they meet again in the same um, uh, situation. And I really, I, I really feel that it really helped the, the, the feeling of two strangers meeting and confronting for something they both think they own. Uh, for the first several minutes of the film, uh, we're kind of unsure if the bike actually belongs to Omer or if he's, you know, just saying it does. We, we don't really know uh, much about him. So why keep the audience uh, in the dark about that instead of getting the audience immediately on his side, establishing that it's his bike? I really wanted to create um, a film, a story that the audience watch it. And there is no proof that it's Omer. There is no proof it's belong to Yunus. Um, it's just what people claims. Mm -hmm. It's about trust. It's about what people say and how the words have meaning and how they, how they, they if, if a person say he's not a thief, if a person say he belongs, belo uh, this, this item is belong to him, uh, we should listen to it and understand maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, but like not 
uh, cancel it or approve it because of the color of the person. And that's what this film is about. It's like there is no proof of every of anything, but there is a different um, behavior of the authorities if the person who claim it's 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 his own bike, if he's black or white. And what does the title signify, uh, White Eye? White Eye for me, first of all, symbolize. Um, um, white eyes symbolize for me blindness, which is um, what I feel the main character uh, are, uh, are in, in, the, in this moment. He's blind and his vision coming back when he see um, that, he, that his action causing, uh, can cause harm to someone. And um, also this whole film happening from a white person eyes. So that was the, the two main reasons that um, I chose to call this film like that. I think um, this is the main issue about this film, blindness and um, how the Western world um, look and behave to refugees, for, to immigrants. Uh, with the ending, was there any particular uh, past film or story that you wanted to reference with it? Um, no, no, um, th th this film is, um, made because of a personal story that happened to me that was, um, quite similar to this story, but ended up a bit better in real life. But, um, the feeling I had in real life, um, that I might, uh, cause, I almost caused someone lose his uh, life, lose his life in, 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 lose his life because um, that's what they experienced. And, and I felt so bad that I didn't want to have the bike anymore. I just want to cut them. I just want to, to burn it. I just couldn't have them anymore. And, and I feel that in this film, what I want to say with this ending is that if, if, if Yunus can't have it, also Omer can't have it. No one deserves it anymore. Now, going back to the production of the film, I understand that you actually shut down for six months. Uh, so I'm wondering what kind of you know, stress did you feel then? And uh, like, how did you uh, change the story, yeah. I guess? It's, 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 um, it's, really, it's really a hard story because uh, I knew I want to do it in one shot and um, lots of people around me because it's my first independent film after film school, lots of people try to back me off from this idea. They try to tell me that um, maybe it's too much, maybe I'm sacrificed uh, the first opportunity that someone gave me and I'm just going to be, it's going to be a big fiasco. So I was thinking that um, maybe I should listen to these people. So I tried to make it with cuts, like I cut the story, I had like different shooting plan. And, um, and at the end, after one, one, one day, we had, we had money to make, to have two, two days, two shooting days. And after one day, I, I just like started to edit it with uh, Shira, the editor, and also the producer. And we found out that, uh, I found out that it's, it's not what, uh, what, I, what I expected. It's, it's, not, it's not the film that I imagined as a director and as a storyteller. And I just told everyone that shooting for tomorrow is canceled. And um, I'm going to, uh, I, I need to think what I'm going to do. And then, I planned it for more than six months. It was, I think, seven months. Um, how I'm going to make it with one shot with half of the money now. And um, we just had money to make it in one day. So we just rehearsed, we, we did a few rehearsals and we, we made a plan how to make it one shot. Um, and at the end it happened, you know, in one day. It's also, I can say that the luck was with me and I also can say that uh, I'm super happy that I went with my with my inner feelings and with my with my intuition, and I didn't let at the end the fears controlled me and um, 
and they made it. Uh, we all made it. All the team, the the crew of the the film, and um, it's only a matter of of what you believe and um, what your stomach tell you to do. Yeah, excellent. Okay, well, Domer, uh, thanks very much for taking the time to chat, and uh, you know, people can see this film now, and we look forward to seeing what you have next. Thank you very much. Um, um, it's it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for having me.